setting a couple of adrenaline line by Teufelberger ropes in this old oak tree. And we're gonna take down a couple of old rope swing ropes here. Um, and while we're at it, we're gonna do a head-to-head -head test about the Akimbo uh, climbed, well, I guess it's a ascending, descending, multi-sender device and the rope runner. Because that's probably the most common question I get is the comparison, which is better, the akimbo or the rope runner. So I've got two of the same ropes here. They're different colors, but we'll throw the akimbo on this pink one and we'll throw the rope runner on the, the normal color and we'll uh, test them out head to head. got the rope runner by Singing Tree. It's a pretty similar price. I think this rope runner is actually a little bit cheaper than the Akimbo typically, but I want to show you guys kind of head to head how long it takes to take out of your bag, put on the rope in comparisons. Cause that's one of the reasons why I choose one device over the other is just because of how much time it takes. So this one's got two slick pins and the carabiner, which are what attach it to the, to the rope. The top one goes on there, slick pin goes through, and this this uh, uh, bolt with the nylock washer is what allows for the adjustment. So if you want to adjust it, there's no adjusting it on the fly. You got to stop, use a wrench, um, and actually adjust that that bolt with the nylock washer. But I've got it set at a pretty good setting for this this Drina line, and I found this setting works fairly well for most. 11.7 millimeter ropes, give or take a little bit. All right, so that takes about well, 30 seconds, 45 seconds or something. It's not terribly difficult. It's got these nice arrows to show you where the rope is supposed to go through. One time I had one of them upside down and it acted really funny to me, but it still worked. And that makes me a little bit nervous, but, um, but that's the basics of it. So we're gonna go ahead and get tied in. Actually, I'm I'll tie myself in on this swivel. All right. So there's the there's the basics there. Get this rope out of the way. Basically, it functions functions identically. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the function. They're really comparable. Um, the biggest differences are going to be when you've got a really pitched up rope. So if you've got a lot of pitch on the rope, I found that the rope runner tends to operate a little bit more smoothly. I think because its primary friction points are this, um, these two, the, the slick pin and the bolt right here. And then this bolt, which is getting pinched by this plate. So there's no, there's no large surface area contact point to get jammed if it catches a, on a pitchy spot on the rope. I can usually still just pull it right by the pitchy spot. And, um, and it goes back to more or less working like normal. Whereas the akimbo, if you catch a spot on the rope that's covered in pitch, you might be stuck for a little while. So I'm just gonna set up my sort of typical single rope ascent system here. Clip to the device, get my feet in, and do a quick ascent. So tens. Little pen. It tends very smoothly, as you can tell. It follows right up along with me without too much trouble. I could shorten my tether a little bit, and that might make things a little easier. But it's really not bad on the whole. Boom! I'm gonna do a little descent here. Pretty smooth. This is the brand new rope. It's a little bit pitchy. It's not bad. I can control it fairly well. 
Um, I gotta watch out for my glove getting caught in there just like anything else. But uh, the one thing I wanna point out is that this edge, this top edge, the bird is what it's called, is not comfortable for pulling on hard. So if you're a bigger guy and you gotta pull hard to release it, um, there are a couple aftermarket little pieces that you can do to cover that, but I find that to be a, a kind of annoying myself. I like to have gloves and I'm using this device. But on the whole, really smooth, tracks well. One other thing, downside I guess, I have to actually disconnect myself if I'm gonna do any branch walking or any leaning. You know, I have to actively take this off. Whereas, as you'll see with the akimbo, um, all you gotta do is lean back away from your device when it's engaged and it'll disconnect just like that. So, we'll show you that one next. All right, so now we've got the akimbo. It's another midline attachable device. $330-ish, I think, give or take. Um, you pop it all the way open, and when it's all the way open, you can actually adjust the amount of friction and for the diameter of the rope, just by these two adjustment points. You swivel that out of the way. Oh, you can't quite, you won't be able to quite see, I don't think, there we go. So you swivel that out of the way, and then you can pop this bollard out and rotate it. So you can rotate it just like that. And uh, I wish I had to remember what my setting was, because that's gonna change. That changes pretty dramatically how this thing functions. So what I've found is that with the top one, as tight as you can get it to still fit the rope in, and the bottom one, a notch or two looser than that, usually it seems to give about the right, uh, right balance. So I'll just throw that on my rope here. And then tuck it in there. And then we'll close, it, close the device. Lock it all down, boom, now we're set. That's all there is to it, it goes on pretty darn easy. Clip it to my harness again. Like I said, it functions very similarly to the, uh, to the rope runner there. I'm gonna clip my chest harness in there, that's what makes it 10. Um, like I was saying before, as soon as I'm ready to, to do some work, all I gotta do is lean back and it actually releases it for me. Which, positive and minuses, a lot of times it'll uh, it'll release as I'm climbing and I'll have to reclip it, but if you got a long ascent, usually it'll just stay right there. There we go, going up. So it turns smoothly, it falls just right along, just like the rope runner did, no problem. I gotta be a little bit careful because this rope is actually kind of wet. But boom, I'm ready to go. I lean back, disconnected. This rope doesn't have any pitch on it. It's still fairly new, so it's gonna interact well with the akimbo. I always say that is the downside. If you're in, working in a lot of pitchy trees, the akimbo is at best a backup device. Big oak trees though, great. Never had any trouble. Coming down, similar way, similarly to the rope runner, you just grab on the top and pull down, and it starts to release. And see how gradual that is? I can really precisely, without any jerkiness, I can control exactly how much I'm coming down. Fast or stop, fast, slow, fast, slow. And if I really come down hard, it'll actually give a little bit when I let go. So if I do a real fast run and I let it go, it's got a little bit of a slower engagement that I really like. So, if I'm on a nice clean rope, this device really works well. The only other issue I've had with it sometimes, occasionally after I've released it and now I'm standing here, sometimes it'll it'll drop on its own. So if I'm standing with a slack rope, it can it moves so easily that it, sometimes it'll just drop. I've got it set just right for this rope, so it actually is. This is about as good as it ever functions. But um, just so you know. I have had that problem. So there we go. That. Such a nice, easy to control device. So while both of these devices are great for, for work, neither of them are certified for use in an ISA climbing competition yet. So just be aware of that. If you're looking for something to, to work your way around a tree at work, on the job, or for fun, um, doing rec climbs, these are both great options, but you cannot use them at any of the ISA competitions.